Could you actually undergo major surgery in ancient times with alcohol, marijuana, and opium? Did these natural anesthetic agents actually work? Let's talk about it. First, a shout out to Latoya who took what she learned from these videos and applied it to her surgery so that she could be super calm and at peace and is doing great one week post-op. Congratulations, Latoya. All right, let's get back to the operating room. Marijuana, opium, and alcohol. Three vices, right? What do they have to do with modern medicine and surgery and this operating room that I'm standing in right now? Well, they were kind of the original ancient anesthesia. Did these natural anesthetic agents actually work? Kind of? We'll talk about them because I love natural supplements. I love herbs and botanicals, but can they be powerful enough to help your body undergo surgery safely and comfortably? And before we get started, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like or subscribe button to keep up with all the medical secrets that I share that show you just how much power natural therapies can have to help you live healthier and with fewer medications. Let's start with alcohol. Alcohol has been around for more than 8,000 years, and we learned about 1,000 years ago how to distill it or concentrate it. That's because the boiling point of alcohol is lower than the boiling point of water. In ancient times, they tried to use this with some wormwood and maybe some other herbs to help get you extra, extra buzzed. We know that at a blood concentration of about 0.03%, you get that buzzed feeling. If you crank it up to 0.4%, you can go into a coma state. And that's what general anesthesia is. It's really a reversible medical coma. So can alcohol's comatose state let you safely undergo surgery? After all, our modern medications like propofol actually act on similar receptors, the GABA receptors in the brain and the rest of the body to help you safely undergo surgery. So why not alcohol? Well, first and foremost, they didn't have IVs back then. So you'd have to drink a lot of alcohol. And I mean a lot lot of near pure alcohol, like over half a liter. That's a ton of volume that you'd have to drink before going unconscious, which would really increase your risk of vomiting and then aspirating, meaning that it goes into your lungs because you're in a comatose state and you can't cough it out. So now that stomach acid goes right into your lungs, can burn them, and that can actually be lethal. It can still happen during surgery and anesthesia today. On top of that, alcohol also wreaks havoc on the rest of your body, especially around the time of surgery. It can impair wound healing, it can cause bleeding, it can cause you to wake up delirious, it can cause major heart problems, and can straight up lead to death, especially if you have alcohol withdrawal after surgery. This is why we always recommend that you quit drinking alcohol for at least two weeks before surgery starts. So alcohol on its own is a no-go to replace anesthesia, but what if you mix it with other herbals? like marijuana. So humans have known about marijuana for thousands of years. In China, about a thousand years ago, its anesthetic properties were reported. They called it methesan, and sorry about the pronunciation. In Egypt and India, they also used marijuana for its anesthesia properties, but they didn't know how to get it into the body. And what did they try? They tried topical, rectally, vaginally, orally, and even inhaling the smoke of the fumes, kind of like what we do today. So one strategy was to drink a lot of alcohol to get really drunk and then inhale the smoke of the fumes from burning cannabis to get really high. Does that sound dangerous at all to you? Well, it definitely was, especially before you had modern medications, ventilators, safety equipment, monitors, and all these things that help keep anesthesia and surgery so safe today. Imagine just going to sleep as a science experiment, your anesthesiologist saying, hey, I hope all this stuff works. I don't know the standardized dose, but hopefully you'll wake up. Good night. That sounds absolutely terrible. Nowadays, we have very potent strains, like even an anesthesia strain of marijuana with a THC concentration in the 30% range. The pain relief can be modest at best, but it's still really controversial. Fortunately though, marijuana doesn't have the same respiratory depression that opioids have, so they're a little bit safer in that sense. There's still the risk of addiction, but most importantly, they just can't give you enough pain relief, certainly compared to opioids, for your body to safely undergo surgery. And that brings in number three, poppy seed. Poppy has been used in the Middle East for thousands of years, but surprisingly, it doesn't look like ancient people discovered the opium in the poppy. That's because there isn't much opium in the poppy flower, leaf, or roots. It's really only in the unripe 
poppy seed. If that gets extracted, then that can be processed into opium. It's actually interesting that lotus can also have similar narcotic properties, and maybe that's why ancient Egyptians would make lotus wine, because those narcotic alkaloids come out when they're dissolved with alcohol, so making a lotus wine could maybe provide some pain relief. Later on, Romans and Persians actually described the opium extraction process, and sometimes they would mix it with things like mulberry or mandrake to give it more pain relieving properties for its use in procedural sedation. The most impressive technique was to actually make a sponge where they put all these herbal liquids in them and the patient would actually inhale them. Kind of like modern medicine where you inhale anesthetic agents that put you to sleep as well. The difference is that no matter how much opium sponge they inhaled, they would still have to be strapped down to the table, I'm guessing for the same reason that you're thinking as well, because it probably just didn't work well enough. Not to mention that this concoction of herbs can be flat out dangerous, especially if you don't have a ventilator like the one behind me to help breathe for you when those opioids take away your respiratory drive, meaning that you stop breathing on your own. So let's bring this all together. Could you actually undergo major surgery in ancient times with alcohol, marijuana, and opium? The answer is a resounding kind of, because sure, your body could go into that comatose state, but you couldn't do it safely. It's actually why in the 1800s, a lot of countries banned the use of these herbal concoctions because people were dying from the attempts at anesthesia, maybe more than the surgery itself. Not a position you'd like to be in if you were the patient. Because none of these herbal concoctions were safely working, there was an open space for things like clinical hypnosis to be described, and they were used successfully in a couple cases. But around the same time, the anesthetic properties of ether were discovered, and ether worked a heck of a lot better than hypnosis or than these other natural and dangerous concoctions we're talking about. So that really took the mainstay of anesthesia and we didn't need to go back to these other techniques. Well, until now, because we see that things like clinical hypnosis can actually be very powerful. More on that in other videos though. Nowadays, we have much more advanced medications and tools like the ventilators here, the breathing tubes, etc. So here's a giant shout out to science and medicine that have helped make surgery so much safer and more comfortable in the last many thousands of years. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to follow and share with your loved ones. And leave comments below and let me know what other secrets you want to know about the human body so that you can control your inner healing potential.